lot. But up next is the match that we're really here for. Attacking the referee there or the uh, ring announcer. The match we're really here for. Mike Awesome, Masato Tanaka, Taz. Tanaka is going to be billed as the uh, FMW Independent World Champion. They're going to wear a belt, but they're at least mentioning it. So this is the uh, coming up as a match we're here for, but it's not the final match on the card, which kind of is kind of interesting. Well, it's not the final match on the card because Taz is leaving. And so a lot of the fans know, not everybody knows. Uh, and even if they do know that he's leaving, they don't necessarily know how they just, you know, word has started to leak out that he was talking to them. And some people have probably heard at this point that he signed, but some of the fans are going to boot Taz and do the whole, you sold out shit. And, uh, then they're going to turn this two this two man match into a three man match because it's Masada Tanaka and Taz, and of course Mike Awesome was trying to confront Tanaka earlier when he got out of the car, or I'm sorry, Jeff Jones was. And uh, have you seen much Masato Tanaka with me? No. I got to tell you, him and Mike Awesome were a real hot spot in my wrestling fandom. And you're about to find out why, but yeah, there are two matches after this. You got Tommy dreamer and Raven taking on Carino and Jack victory. Uh, you'll also have in your, your main event, Rob Van Dam and balls Mahoney. Rob Van Dam is, is at this point, the guy they're trying to sort of push as, Hey, he's our, he's our best wrestler. He's our TV champion and he's in the main event. And I kind of think it's cool that the television championship is in the main event. And Van Dam is really making this belt matter. I think he won in April of 98. Here we are in September of 99. He's still got the title. So that's quite a run with the belt. And here he is, Taz. Dude, it's a hell of a look, man. It's very Mike Tyson like with the black towel over the head. Mm hmm. He looks good. Yes, he does. It's a good presentation. He was one of my absolute favorites. You see the fans flipping him off. Let's just uh, play a little audio here. Tanaka has more to gain in this matchup than does Taz. The independent world heavyweight title, FMW's version of the world heavyweight title, is not on the line. But the ECW world heavyweight title is. Should Tanaka defeat Taz here tonight at Anarchy Rules, he would be ECW's World Heavyweight Champion and FMW's World Heavyweight Champion. Can you imagine the battles between the offices of ECW and FMW trying to book a man who holds two World Heavyweight titles? You'd have a hell of a hard time calling play-by-play play in Japan, wouldn't you? you know oh, what a great line from Don Callis telling, uh, how about the, uh, the streamer treatment here? A, uh, Japanese tradition for Taz. The fans are throwing it at Taz, not Tanaka. Farewell swan song for Taz of sorts, though. You could hear the fans in the background chanting, you sold out. And what a fun little, uh, back and forth exchange there with Callis and Joey styles, where they're talking about how if Tanaka wins, he'll be not only an FMW champion, but an ECW champion. And Callis says, boy, you'd have a hard time doing play by play in Japan. Wouldn't you fast forward 20 years? And that's literally what Don Callis does. <laughs> 248 pounds from Masato Tanaka. So he's, uh, at the build weight here of, uh, Ric Flair during his big run. And here's Taz, man. What an intimidating presence. What an intimidating look. God damn. His career was cut too short. He's one of my absolute favorites, man. Also 248 pounds, the human suplex machine and your world champion. And not only that, uh, just, uh, got a lot of time for him on a personal level and see, I, I was talking to you about this earlier that you have introduced me to a lot of great people in wrestling that I've become friends with. And Taz is one of them. Didn't know him until, you know, you and I started doing the podcast, met him one time at the WWE restaurant or the, I guess, WWF restaurant back restaurant back then. <laughs> Sorry. 
Yeah, I just realized that's uh, that's the belt I have. I have that one. That was at Starcast this past week. I thought that may have been a different one, but no, that's it. Masato Tanaka and Taz here about to get it on, but look as you start to see the head start to turn. People looking towards the entrance here. Mm-hmm. Bit of a disturbance in the crowd. He's asking for the mic. Here's the audio. Let him go. Come on, you big son of a bitch. You want some? Come on. Who's he talking to? What's going on? I'll probably say idiot, man. Hey, shut the fuck up. Over there. That's Mike Awesome. Hey, man, your beef is with him. Now your beef's with me. Now your beef's with me, you big dumb bastard. Come get some. We've been using footage of... Let's get some! Let him go! Let him go! There's the boss! Paul E. Heyman! Paul Heyman is late! Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait, whoa, whoa! Whoa, the Savior's here! Paul Heyman, the Savior! Yeah, brother, you can look at me! You promoted me! You pushed me! You told me! I'm the baddest son of a bitch going. I'll tell you what. You let that big goof go, and I'll choke him out. Because I'm Taz, the human suplex machine. Beat me if you can survive if I let you. We've been using footage of Tanaka. You want some, brother? I'm taking you out soon. You just sit there with your dumb ass and shut up. Come on, big man. Come on. We've been using footage of Tanaka beating Mike Austin to build up Tanaka. What are you doing? Like doing? And Jeff I'm Jones doing? obviously stooges it off to I'm Mike Austin in Japan. I'm fucking waiting. I'm getting you a goddamn bye week. Let him go. And there is legitimate heat between Taz and Paulie these days, I can tell you that much. I promoted you as the baddest motherfucker on the planet because I know that you can beat any man on the face of the planet. You want to fight two men? Yeah, I want to fight two men. Here again, I question the logic, Joey Styles. We have a tradition in ECW, and if you want to put that belt on the line in Chicago tonight, I say we make this a three-way tag. Let him go. Let him go. And the match is made. Mike Awesome rips off the T-shirt, slides right in in his full gear, ready to go, and here comes Tanaka. So Tanaka and, and Mike awesome have feuded all across Japan and now here in ECW and fans know what to expect when they're in there together. You can see Taz just biding his time because he knows these guys have an issue with each other and they want to kill each other. So Taz is being smart, being the champ, just let them do his bidding, but they tried to sort of blur the lines of reality where you could see some, some heat and some frustration on from both Taz towards Paul Heyman and vice versa. And as a result. Well, here we go. We've got a three-way dance now, and we're, we're talking about how, uh, Paul has promoted Taz as the baddest motherfucker on the planet and, and given some credibility that he can beat any one man, but now he wants to put his big boy pants on and, and try to do it to two guys, which is never smart, I guess, to put your belt on the line against two guys where you don't even have to be pinned in order right. to lose your title. God, he was a, he was a fire plug, wasn't he? Just low to the ground and stout and I loved all three of these guys though. The combination of this, I mean, there's so much great shit in ECW here at 99 and it's a shame that it would ultimately have to come to an end, but what a move that is too. Yeah. You know what? I, I think we, I looking back on it now, I think we did Mike awesome a disservice. Oh, of course you did. You fucking ruined the guy. You made him a goddamn comedy character. And it's not your fault, but 
I mean, they, they just didn't know really what they had and they just assumed, oh, he's a good little hand from ECW and they gave him the Sandman or Raven or Mikey Whipwreck or Stevie Richards or whatever you guys were doing with everybody else treatment. And then you made him silly and it was like, dude, this guy's badass. but check this out now that all of a sudden the enemies are working together and check this out, man, Taz is done that quickly, that quickly. And look at the crowd. Look at the hush. We play the audio. Taz has been eliminated. Those are three words I never thought I'd hear on an ECW pay-per-view, Joey Styles. Taz has been eliminated. Taz has been eliminated, which means that Mike Awesome and Masato Tanaka will do battle for the ECW World Heavyweight title. All the bull- so both guys pinned Taz. So there is no one definitive ECW world champion, but what has happened is the world champion has lost and in short order taking big moves from both guys. And as you see, as he's on the ramp, the entire locker room empties out to give a standing ovation to Taz, to thank him for his contributions to ECW. And that's it. Taz is done with ECW doing the honors on the way out and says, you guys go at it. And we will have a new ECW world champion tonight. Masato Tanaka, who was getting the shot and we all knew and he was advertised as getting the shot against Mike awesome. who was very much a surprise here. Fun little twist here. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, it, 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 I'm shocked. And I, I think both those guys sold it too, as if they, when they pinned him, they were shocked as well. The way they sold that, you know, they both stood up and looked around like what the fuck just happened. Pretty fucking cool. Again, Paulie dangerously ahead of his time. So, uh, tell me, I, I know Mike awesome is no longer with us. Tell me about, uh, Masada. Oh, he's still here and he's still, uh, working shots. Oh, good. Masato Tanaka and Mike awesome. Yeah. Unfortunately, Mike awesome took his own life, which is really a shame. You know, there's no telling how much of that. I hate to be this guy, but it doesn't how much of that is, is related to CTE, you know, with all the. I'm thinking the same thing, crazy chair shots and things like that. I mean, you just feel bad, but we didn't, we, I know that sounds stupid now, but we didn't know. And had I known like these days, I don't want to see anybody get hit in the head with a chair, you know? And I know that the chair shot Cody Rhodes took a a few months ago was, has been criticized very heavily, but it's not a regular occurrence. Some people would say it should never happen. And I guess that's relatively hard to argue, but. You just, golly, I just don't want to see it now that I know that there's such a price to pay, you know? Mm-hmm. He, uh, Tanaka's going to be with the company here until, I don't know, like spring of 2000. And then he uh, pops back over to Japan and, and works, uh, a lot over there everywhere, really pro wrestling zero one and all Japan and does some FMW before they're done and pops up uh, every now and again for new Japan. And he's been back to the States a few times. He's worked, uh, game changer wrestling. Most recently, I think is the most recent place I saw him. And I think he's done some dragon gate stuff and Jersey all pro back in the day. And even a couple of ring of honor shots at some point. But the big thing that always stands out to me for him is, uh, the, the return for ECW's one night stand, which is a big deal, mm-hmm. but he picks up some gold here. He's tag champs. I think twice once with balls and once with, um, Tommy dreamer, but the world title here, man, he's, uh, he's going to have a, a feud with. Mike awesome that we're going to let them flip flop some stuff. 
Again, I, every time I see a chair shot in ECW, I'm thinking, does anybody know how to work a chair shot? And it apparently they don't. Apparently they just always said, fucking lay it in. Yes. It was, it was not a matter of look at this dude, a tornado DDT uh-huh. instead of off the turnbuckle, off a chair, onto the ramp. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. The, there was a, it was a, a matter of pride. I think in ECW, like I think amongst the boys, it was misguided. For sure. But I think amongst the boys, the idea was if you put your hands up, you're a pussy. That's what the WBF and WCW does. Be a man and take your fucking lumps. Mm. I don't know that. I mean, maybe we could ask Bubba Ray Dudley one day or something. I don't know. You know, I, I'm thinking maybe that that was not the credo, but that the boys just knew that you needed to do it. No, I mean, I, I really feel like I've heard at some point, some of the guys say that if they tried to protect themselves, some of the other guys would be like, what the fuck are you doing? Pussy. Wow. Be a man. Now, <laughs> now, I mean, don't get me wrong. This is from the era where, you know, when I played football and somebody got fucking concussed, we didn't know that at the time, but when somebody had head trauma, we said, oh, he just got his bell wrong. Just rub some dirt on it. Miss a play or two. He'll be all right. How about Mike awesome? Just picking the chair up, putting it over his own face. <laughs> Jesus. And kicking out, but you're familiar with that phrase in, in traditional sports. Oh, he got his bell rung. Mm-hmm. We didn't know what the fuck we were saying. We didn't mm-hmm. know. Oh yeah. He just, he has a brain bleed right now. He he's got a brain bruise. We he's concussed. No, we just said, oh, he's he's got his bell rung. He'll be okay. Watch this move here, Tony. No, never mind. What move are you talking about? You thought something was coming and didn't hear? I thought he was maybe he's trying for it again here. Check this out. Are you ready? Yep. Are you ready? No. Are you ready? What the fuck? <laughs> now in fairness. Tanaka kept his head up, took it on his shoulders and back. Still, what the fuck? And look what at the, the crowd. Fuck? Listen, I, I get it. He kept his head up, but you still, hell, you could fucking fracture a vertebrae. Lower back. Blow out a shoulder. Look at that table. It's obliterated. Is Jeff Jones going to take a bump in this? I don't think so. Shit. Probably took one after the show. <laughs> Can you imagine how many, how many quote unquote rats, uh, Jeff had to take care of after these shows. Mm. Of course, I'm talking about the flea bag hotels. They said, watch this move. You ready for this? Oh. He just the fucking. I can see why you like to knock it just cause the fucking bumps he's taken. Dude, this wild. Look at the size of this guy going off the top. Fuck one, two, and he still kicked out. Well, why wouldn't he? I don't know. <laughs> after, after taking, throwing him to the table, Jesus Christ. Got to take his chair shot like a man guy. It's ECW. Holy shit. Look at that. Look at this. <laughs> okay. He hit him with the top of the chair there where that hand is. And that's the real hard part of the chair. That's the part of the chair that doesn't give that part of when it lands on you is going to do some damage. What year did Mike Awesome take his life? Do you remember off the top of your head? Uh, I can find out. I don't think it was. I think it was like a seven, but I could be wrong. Jeez. Yeah, February seventeenth, two thousand seven. Hmm. And by the way, he pops up on Nitro. 
uh, in April of 2000. So not too terribly long after this. Right. By the spring of 2000, both of these guys are gone. I would think as an athlete that you would be happy. Maybe I'm wrong. Just, just before your body's sake, happy to leave ECW and go to WCW. I mean, you would have to think that, well, of course, you know, we had a big TV contract. We were Turner and I get that, but you didn't have to do crazy shit like this. Unless maybe you wanted to do crazy shit like this and thought, well, I can take this, this act and take it to WCW. But a guy like Mike awesome, you know, thinking, wow, I'll work at WCW and I want to take all these crazy fucking chair bumps and table bumps and fucking crazy shit. Look at Jeff. Make sure it's the table is upright. What are they going to fucking do now? Okay. He threw him out of the ring back first to a table. This has got to be fun. And uh, it's wild. Isn't it Bubba? Yeah, it is man. Okay. Got him on the chair. Going to center himself. He's going to do his big frog splash from the top. What if he is? Well, I mean, look, whoa. He's, uh, what's amazing about what Mike Awesome could do here was that he did things that cruiserweights were doing. Right. But he could also sling your ass over the top rope with a power bomb down to the floor onto <laughs> a table. Yes. He could do whatever he wanted. Right. <laughs> oh, dude. Yep, that wanted Jesus Christ. Your Mike's looking around like, what? I won? I killed a man? I won? <laughs> now, what's going on here? Oh, Taz? I mean, this is a pretty cool deal here. Taz is doing what he can to sort of pass the torch and yeah, it's coronation is what it is. Quote unquote, make a guy. And there you go. Mike awesome is the guy to run with the ball, lead the company now. Pretty cool moment, huh? I think it's great. And I think it's great that Taz did this. Shows a lot of class on his part. And he walks away and there's your new champion. Great moment, man. How many stars? I'm so glad you asked. Mm -hmm. Three and three quarters. Hmm. Okay. Awesome. To, uh, here's what he, he wrote. Awesome did a German suplex followed by a spear for a near fall. He used the chair off the top for a near fall, then delivered a weak chair to Tanaka's chest. Fans sort of groaned at that. Both guys wound up standing on the top rope with the table set up. Their footing wasn't perfect. And one of them losing balance would have killed the moment. Not to mention both could have been hurt badly. Anyway, awesome delivered the power bomb through the table and got the pin three and three quarter stars. should mention that Tanaka here had quite the schedule. Meltzer would say he flew from Japan to work ECW in Buffalo last Saturday, then flew back to Japan and worked through Saturday night in Japan before flying back to Chicago. So that's four 18 hour flights in a one week period that'll run anybody down. Yeah. I remember taking one flight from Japan back and I, it, it, it completely knocked me out the next day. I never thought that jet lag was real, but it was from Japan. How about four flights of that in a week? Jesus. A 
That's a lot. I do need to say that. Okay. All right, Jeff, we got it. We, we, we got your bangs. We, we get it, but I do need to say that. So he needed people- a judge for them bangs. <laughs> Tony's back with Conrad, not your classy podcast. Watch a long time not to laugh, lowest rules can't pass. This wasn't the initial plan, Tom's a good looking man. Quandike Bill, make a chance. Tommy, come over here. 